The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God We believe the message you're about to listen to Will touch your spirit and soul Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord Through the power of His Word May His glory shine through you forever about his love. Think about how God has how good God has been to you. Think of his faithfulness, of his mercies, his loving kindness. If indeed he's been good to you, go ahead and lift your voice, lift your hands and worship the name of the Lord this morning. Exalt his name, exalt his name, magnify and glorify his name because he is God. He is God all by himself. He is the Alpha and Omega, he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the Asian of days, the immortal, eternal, invisible, the only wise God. He is the God, same yesterday, today, and forever. Worship the name of the Lord this morning. People of God, lift your voice and worship him this morning. We serve a mighty God. He's a glorious God. He's the God who sits in heaven and make the earth his footstool. He's the almighty God, all-powerful God. Can you thank him for what he has done for you? All the mighty, wondrous things he has done in your life. Can you lift your voice and bless his name? For making a way where there seems to be no way. For providing for you at the, at the at that point of need for healing you of that sickness can you worship him this morning for his protection over your life over your family for his preservation can you bless the name of the lord this morning he deserves our praise he deserves our worship let it come from within you magnify his name offer the fruit of your leaves to him this morning Beloved, it's by his mercies that we have not been consumed. His faithfulness endures forever. His mercies are new every morning. Let's bless his name. Don't get tired. Worship him. Worship God. Can you just commit this meeting into God's hand? You have expectations. We've come here with desires in our hearts. Can you lift them up to God this morning? And pray that the Lord will meet you and every, every worshiper here at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. That nobody will come here and live the same way they have come. Everyone will encounter God. Every life will be transformed this morning in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we are afraid father lord we thank you we give you all the glory honor adoration because you are god you are father you are maker father we bless your name this morning we say be glorified in jesus name father we've gathered in your presence this morning we pray in the name of jesus that your presence oh god will be heavy things in our midst this day in the name of jesus Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that less of us and more of you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you lead, you guide the affairs of this service in the name of Jesus. Father, for those coming on their way, you quicken their footsteps in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We've all come here with desires in our hearts. Father, we pray, Lord, that you meet everyone at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. Father, even when your word would come forth, it would come forth expressly with power and with might in the name of Jesus. Even when we'll go to, to, to take communion, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. You, it would be a time, oh God, to connect with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, at the end of the service, all the glory will be yours and all the blessings are ours in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This will sing together from our Baptist hymnal, hymn 200. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Hymn 200.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let heaven live in so shout the great hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord, I want you to shout a great hallelujah to the Lord, to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. Okay, sex is one thing again, but you can't do anything about that apart from people that do sex change. But you studied me. You are still a man. If you're a man, and you're a woman, if you're a woman. Well, the last one that I'll talk about is also a very uh, debilitating illness, diabetes. This is one of the ones also, just like hypertension, that I would like us to pay attention to. Um, it's mainly about lifestyle, mainly. That it's, it is rising, it is rising, people It's occurring more in developing countries. Again, most of our, our thinking is linked to our diet. You know, the Western world, there are more, there are more Western, um, Western, our lives, way of doing life now, we are living more like a Western way. Um, well, with every good thing comes a bad thing. Yes, there's uh, more civilization, there's more things, but then there are also, by imbibing some other things too that are not good for us. We should be able to know what is good for us and use that one. The one that's not good for us, we, we, we reduce it. But we're just taking everything, you know, because, Take the good and bad. We should, as developing countries, we should know what, what is good for us or not. This is where a disorder, is a disorder where cells can't, can get, can't get glucose from the blood. So blood glucose is high. Um, glucose is in, not just in, it's not just in coke or something. It's also in bread. It's also you know, the carbohydrates. It's also in white rice. It's also in yam. Some people, I've seen people order, the, they order, um, um, McDonald's or something, they will say, I want a double mark on that and a diet coke. Diet coke is not a problem. Whatever you're even eating is enough to, you might as well go and drink your coke properly. All doing diet, or doing diet coke, where right? your food they're eating is full of fat, it's full of carbohydrates, it's really the same thing. Because your carbohydrates and your glucose is got from a breakdown of carbohydrates. So if you eat a lot of yam, a lot of eba, a lot of uh, uh, bread, white bread, not wheat bread. All these things will break down to glucose. And this is what we're talking about here. The glucose will be high in your body. Meanwhile, you, you cannot utilize it. Then it can lead to diabetes. It affects about 382 million people worldwide. That's about 2013. This is 2018. That's five years' time. Uh, five years after. I'm sure it will be more than this now. There are generally two types of um, diabetes. The first one is called type 1 disease, and then it's about 10% of cases. This one you are born with, is a, you are unable to produce an hormone called insulin. Insulin is what helps to be able to break down the carbon, the glucose in your body. So the fact that you are born with it, that is the one we call type 1. The type 2 one is the one that is more common, and that one is directly linked to uh, our lifestyle. That's why we talk more about the lifestyle. The type 2, when the body is respond, uh, unable to respond to insulin, you develop it. It's not that you are born with it. So that one is what you can do something about. And that's the one you find more in occurrence. So what are the symptoms of diabetes? Dry mouth, increased test, frequent urination, tiredness, blood vision, and headache. When somebody has diabetes, it means that the glucose is so high in your body, if you go to the bathroom, you will notice sometimes that when you pee, you will see ants around it. Ants around it are trying to get the sugar because you are peeing sugar out. It's, your, it's not absorbing to your system. Your kidney is trying to get, you will have got rid of some of it. So your blood, you will see some ants around it. If you start seeing that, run to the hospital. Don't walk, oh, run. Because at that time, there is enough blood, too much blood in your system for the kidney to be trying to excrete it out. And that means there will be already some organs that are already getting damaged for that to be happening. Um, people come to you when you have diabetes, they'll tell you that I wake up a lot in the middle of the night to go and pee. You ask them, did you drink a lot of water the night before sleep? They say, no, but sometimes four, three, four, five times I'm waking up and go and pee. We'll check for their blood sugar because once that is happening again 
Like I said, frequent urination is part of the things that you find when you have diabetes. So what are the risk factors of diabetes? Again, obesity, which is linked to those, like I said, is your uh, eating too much excess calories without energy. Especially people that have visceral belly fat. I mean, belly fat is here, your stomach. That we have linked to diabetes, uh, diabetes as well. So obesity is not good in any vitreal form. Being overweight causes the release of chemicals that stabilize cardiovascular and metabolic uh, functions. In, in, that's English. In pure terms, it affects the way your body works. The body is supposed to work properly, but if you are overweight, the chemicals stabilize the way you work. Drinking just one kind of mineral per day can cause the risk of type 2 diabetes by 22%. I don't know if you have heard some, they've done some analysis in terms of how many sugars are in some of these soft drinks that we drink. If you see them, if you see the amount of sugar, you tell yourself, I'm not going to drink those things again. Water, it is by far the best. Water by far is the best. I know sometimes you have this knack to drink Coke or some mineral. I've seen people morning, afternoon, night, they have a bottle of Coke. If you, have, if, you, if you know the amount of sugar that you have taken inside your body, if you constantly do that for a while, you're going to have, if, I mean, it's, not, it's not guaranteed, but you have a likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. You have a likelihood. And at that point in time, you'll be wishing you can reverse time, and you can't do that. So it's better to prevent it and have a healthy lifestyle in terms of eating. So you don't, have, don't develop it. Don't develop it. It is believed by researchers that there is a direct link, and not just an indirect one, effect on your weight in terms of uh, diabetes. Low testosterone levels in men also can cause uh, diabetes. So there's, an, uh, there's a time called pre-diabetes. That's before, before you are diagnosed as being a diabetic. Most people who get type 2 diabetes have pre-diabetes, uh, where the sugar level is high but not enough to be called diabetes so it's just before that just like hypertension there's what we call pre-hypertension if your blood pressure is between just about over 20 25 130 and you're getting your blood pressure the lower one being 85 below 90 that's pre-hypertension you quickly run to the hospital so i can get it down the same thing with diabetes there's a pre just before gets to that level of diabetes. At that time, you can do something about it. And most of the time, because it's pre, I mean, because it's linked to diet, it's linked, it's because of, it's, it's, it's linked to type 2. You develop it. It's your, it's your lifestyle that will make you get it. So you can do something about it. At this stage, some damage to the heart and circulatory system has already occurred. Remember I told you, sometimes by the time you see the symptoms, some things have already gone inside wrong before you start seeing some of these symptoms. So, if you don't do your checkup regularly to be able to know if it's pre, to be able to try and address it, by the time you see visible and visible symptoms, it has already caused damages, maybe to your kidneys, maybe to your heart, and that's not what you want. So, if you have high sugar levels, do something about it. I will give you an example of somebody, um, one of my clients, or uh, the MD, called me, said, ah, Dr. Ike, the, my driver, I want to send to you, I think he's having blood problems with his vision. Of course, if your driver has a problem with his vision, you know that uh, you have to do something about it quickly. So he comes to us, we sent him to Noah, we checked him, only for us to find out that he's diabetic. And diabetic not of just now now, he's been diabetic since. But he's one of um, a member of some of these churches that wear the uh, transparent, not transparent, luminous, you know, I won't mention it, I don't want to mention the name, luminous, you know, move your light, you know, when you have uh, like this, like the, uh, our protocol are wearing. So apparently he knows that he has it, but he's saying that in Jesus' name I don't have it. So the doctor will tell him you have it, he will go away and say, I don't have it. In Jesus' name. So whenever he goes to the hospital, you know they will tell you to fill some of your medical history. He's always doing ticking. No, 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 no. Do you have hypertension? No. Do you have diabetes? No. Yes, it's good to have faith, but 
you know. Anyway, we now found out that he has had his ability since I engaged his doctor, we spoke, and he said he has told him several times, but he said he doesn't have it. So he doesn't take the medication, so he's not a controlled diabetic. And he has not doing, he's not doing anything about it to reverse it. So what is happening is the diabetes is affecting the different parts of his organs, of course. So it has affected his eye. He can't see properly. One eye was already gone. And then the other eye is like about half gone. So he was driving the MD of a company with only one and the, with only half a eye. <laughs> I mean, his MD was, I mean, he was in shock. By the time we presented the case to him and told him about it. So these illnesses have, as they, they will cause other diseases, cause other things and they will affect us. So, Diabetes, it is treatable, it is mindable. Uh, it, is not, it is not a death sentence. Um, if you don't control it by taking your medication and controlling your diet, it will get worse, it will affect more, part of your, more of your part, but it's something that is mindable. The type 1 usually lasts, lasts for an entire life because it was, not, it was something that was, you were born with. It is not that you developed it. But the type 2 have been known, can get rid of, it, of the symptoms, via diet, exercise, and body weight control. And that's why I said the one that is type 2, the, most, the more common one, you can do something about it because of your lifestyle. Therefore, you must watch what we eat and drink. Exercise regularly and watch our weight if we are overweight and go on a diet. So, complications of hypertension includes eye problems, just like I've told you, glycoma, blindness, food problems, ulcers, because your body doesn't heal as much when you have diabetes, but you need to know how to manage it. Try and prevent, you know, try and prevent being injured, but then you can still make sure that when you are injured as a diabetic, you treat it properly and on time. Heart problems, stroke, erectile dysfunction, infection, and then poor wound healing. Ultimately, I, didn't, uh, there I, I never got to finish my story. The driver, I now took him to another consultant. Um, unfortunately, on getting there, the consultant, when he saw him, the consultant started shouting, no, get out of my office. I was wondering, uh, what is... Apparently, the consultant had seen him before, and again, he ran away because he, he was denying the fact that he had the disease. So, the consultant now said, I don't want to treat him because this guy will be, he will, he will not continue, he will not do the, his own part, and then the job I want to do will not be good. They will be blaming me as a consultant, as a doctor, not knowing that he is not going to do his own part. He said, when I first saw this person, only one eye was affected mildly. Now, once one eye he has gone totally blind on one eye, and the other eye, about half of it is gone. He said, so what magic am I going to perform? So it's not about the doctor not doing his job, but the person did not take care of his own, he, don't, he didn't take responsibility to take care of himself during the, all that time. He didn't, was not using the medication, he was not doing the exercise, so gradually, I got in touch with his wife, his wife said, I've been begging him to do, do this treatment since, but at this point in time, as a, they had to sack him. The job, he had to sack him because it's a risk to his job, uh, to the driver, to the MD, and to any other person there, it's a risk. So they, gave, they paid him off, and eventually he had to go back to his hometown. From what I heard as of some years after, he was totally blind because of something. And he had a way, he had, a way. He had, he was, he had things he had to, to protect himself. The job he was saying, I don't have money. Now you have done something that they cannot pay you again. They paid you, so, and they'll pay you off. So he was gone. So please let us know that. I'm not saying God doesn't help, but even if you are test, be testing yourself to know that at least the miracle is working. Some people will not do anything. They say, ah, I'm not here, I'm not here. But I've seen too many, too many. I'm telling you, it's sad. It's too many. And there are, not of, there, are, there are a lot of fake, I'm sorry, there are a lot of fake pastors. We know. So they are causing more death more, you know, to affect this, our, our people. So let us be knowledgeable and know what to do. So exercise is very, good, uh, uh, is very necessary for uh, diabetes. So I will end by giving us like some uh, lifestyle changes, some ideas in terms of how to manage our lifestyle to help us with our uh, lifestyle so we don't have disease or know how to manage disease if we do have it. Again, 
change your dietary habits. Um, I, again, try not to eat late. Try and eat healthy food. It's, there's a whole list of healthy food that you can eat. Eat healthily, don't eat late, so that you can, you don't, don't take too much salt. Uh, too much salt is not good. Uh, too much sugar is not good. Too much fat is not good. Like anything else, I tell people, anything that is too much is not good. Even water, I'm sure if you take too much, you will drown. Oh, so don't take too much. Everything is in moderation. In moderation. Eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, also, in, term, in light of that uh, fresh and vegetables, some of us, we cook our vegetables too much. By the time you are serving the person, the, all the nutrients have gone out. Try and eat, if possible, salad. Raw, raw, raw vegetables. I mean, the one that you can eat, oh, not like a good, you know. <laughs> not, the one that you can eat. So that you can eat. That's what helps you. It helps you to be able to avoid soft drinks and added sugar. Do not be putting extra salt on food, just like my friend. And then try and eat, use herbs, lemon, garlic. Those are very healthy and help us, help your body system to flow very well. It's just, it's just good for you. Um, what I try and do is, first thing in the morning, I take, you're supposed to take water 1.5 times per day, at least. You know the big bottle of water? That's what you're supposed to take. First thing in the morning, take your glass of water. It helps your metabolism to be right. Before you know it, you are going to the bathroom, you have done what you have done. You are okay for the day. You are ready to go for the day. Sometime midday again, take another glass. It's helping your body to just... Water is just good like that. And then you... I don't... Uh, I do it at night too, but some people, it's not good for them because that means they have to keep waking up to go and pee. So maybe the last part of it, when you take water to, to go and sleep, maybe around 7, 7, 30. So by around 9, you would have gone to the bathroom and to go and pee and then go and sleep. Otherwise, it will affect your sleep. So water is very, very good. It helps us during the day. Cut down on fatty food and high calorie food. Another thing, again, is hydration. I've just mentioned about that. Water is very good. Eight to ten glasses of water a day keeps your body hydrated and metabolism high. Maintain a healthy weight. I've, told, I've taught us how to calculate our BMI. BMI means body mass index. That will guide us in terms of um, our weights and then exposing us to other uh, risk illnesses. If you notice, every of the illnesses I've talked about, diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, all that also, I mentioned weights there. Weight, weight is very important to make sure you are maintaining the correct weight. BMI have given us figures where you know the normal, try and keep it in that normal one. Get enough sleep. This is one of the issues that we face in Nigeria again, in Lagos, more importantly, but we can do something about it. Eight hours is better, so you, but that's very, very rare. So ensure at least six hours. Try and get six hours of solid sleep. Hopefully, you, when you sleep, sleep in terms of not still thinking, you, know, you can be on the bed and you're lying down and not sleep because you are thinking of something. Try and sleep and get enough rest. Eat regular meals. Skipping meals means that you end up snacking on junk food. What does that mean? Some people, when they are walking or they are doing the normal things during the course of the day, they forget to eat their, uh, their lunch or something. They're on the way, ah, please, puff, puff, gala. It's just a bang on the way because you have to eat something. Try and stick to normal food so that you'll be able to know that this is my lunch time. I eat something that's good. Rather than you forget it and then on the way you start to buy something to, to keep yourself. Um, uh, go walking. Walk. Walking is very good exercise. You don't, that doesn't need anything. You don't need to go to the gym for that. You can walk around your neighborhood to be able to. So that is something you can do something about. Manage stress as much as possible. Find something that gives you a relaxing activity. Some people is music. So when you, think, you, want, you want to relax, find somewhere, put your headphone or whatever, sit down and relax. Christian music, whatever music, make sure that you're relaxed. So find something that makes you relax. So during that time that you want to relax, if it's 30 minutes or one hour, you are totally relaxed. Not that you are, you are trying to relax and your mind is doing something else again. That's not relaxation. Then finally, a no-no, smoking. That was, uh, smoking is not to cause cancer, it causes so many things, it affects. So that one you should stop. Avoid every drinking. So by very, uh, observing these simple changes, hopefully, starting our daily routine, we will see the major difference in our lifestyle. Just like our theme says this year, giant stride. You will need to have good health.
So have giant strides. Even God wants something because you have not done good, you have not done your own part. So have giant. And it's more importantly, if you want to, you have to have good health to enjoy your giant strides. Where the giant strides have taken you to? Giant strides have taken you to where you are okay, but you are in, in, you are in ill health. So what have you done? You need to have giant strides from achieving the giant. I'm sorry, good health to achieving the giant and good health to enjoy where the giant strides will take you to. I pray that God will give us wisdom and to be able to achieve this in Jesus' name. Questions? All right. We may not take question unless you give us permission. Because of time now. Uh, do you want us to take uh, three uh, okay, Dr. Joe is raising his hand. Uh, somebody at the back there. And then uh, we have uh, Deke Mpaburu. We have Mama Titla. And we have... Uh, okay, which, 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 those of you that have, ma uh, have mentioned your name. Uh, please, church, we should take them. You are the one saying it, so because of our time. Okay, so please, let's get microphone. So we have already thanked uh, Dike Abi, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dike here. So please don't don't uh, don't thank them. Uh, don't thank him again. Just go straight to your points, please. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. My my question is processed food. I know that semovita is processed. All those uh, uh, bit, I mean uh, wheat and all they are processed. But we have our, our own food, pounded yam, amala, and semo, I mean uh, uh, fufu, fufu, and others. With, with vegetable soup, is it not a balanced diet than the processed food? Say again, sorry, I think. Yeah. I said that I know that semo vita are not the other semo are not those that they are all processed. But we have our own that is not processed. That is amala, uh, pounded yam, and uh, fufu and others. If you take it to vegetable, is it not better than the processed food? Thank you. Okay, please, the rest, it, maybe you can just be writing your question if you are finished so that we can answer all of them together. Okay. Um, processed food is not, anything that is natural is better than processed food. Natural from the farm and everything is better than processed food. But why they're trying to do that, uh, the processed one for wheat, for, you know, like pandayam. People like pandayam. So, for instance, one pandayam, but you can have, you cannot have, uh, Panadian that is wheat instead of the one that is wheat, uh, uh, the yam. So that's the meaning of process. So I don't think, I believe that the process one that is wheat, wheat is the thing, not the bean that is processed. So, but I'm on that, that is not processed. I don't think it's a processed one anyway. Those are, but anything natural is better than processed, processed food. Question. There is a lot of um, dubious labeling on products sold in shops these days. Uh, when I go to the shops, I see on virtually all the oils that uh, cooking oils, uh, they put cholesterol free. On biscuits and so on, you see sugar free. How do we know which one is genuine and which ones uh, which ones are not? Secondly, is it good to eat eggs? And in what form? All right, thank you. That question will probably be to NAVDAC. I, I don't know. <laughs> to NAVDAC. NAVDAC is the one that will know what, which one is the genuine one or is not the genuine one. But because you cannot do all that or you cannot uh, put that on your label if NAVDAC has not checked it to ensure that it happens. So I'm not sure about um, so NAVDAC to NAVDAC that, that. But I know that um, a certain power, uh, a certain oil, uh, sorry, 
they, they mentioned that, and I know people there, and they actually, I know that they actually go to extend to ensure that it happens. That, uh, but in all these things, you cannot really tell. I can't really tell. So it depends on who is the regulatory body. is one that can guarantee that. Idea. Eggs are good for you, but not too much, again. And it's better for you as a boiled egg. Boiled eggs are better as a boiled egg. And try not to eat too much of the yolk part. So try not to fry it. Try and boil it. Just the same way that they will tell you to boil your yam instead of frying it. Frying is not anything that is frying. Generally, reduce it less and less. Make sure it's boiled. So boiled egg is better. And then in terms of the oils, I, cannot, I don't know which one. I have to know the genuine one apart from uh, the people that regulate them. There's a question here. My contribution is a cautionary. Uh, WhatsApp is doing a lot of harm. And it has become very popular. You see people sending many things to you on health, on WhatsApp. Yeah. People should take caution and should seek proper advice from the doctor. Thank you very much. OK. Any other question? I, I said, this is caution. I'm caution, cautioning caution. people. Uh, yeah. Thank many, you very much. Many medical treatments circulate on WhatsApp on our phones. Most of them are very dangerous. They have no foundation in medicine. Mm. So please, before you take anything on WhatsApp, try and check up with your doctor, rather than go ahead and even recommend it to others. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, maybe the last one. Oh, OK, OK. Because already passed it. But OK. Eh? Another question. OK. Oh, OK. Praise thy Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this question is strictly direct, directed to me. I used to take a, a, a beetroot okay. after blending every morning. But after taking a glass, I feel heavy, you know. Feel I'm full already. I can't eat. And I don't know if there is any side effect after uh, this uh, type of Juice taking, mm. and the second question is for general. This is pepper. Is it good to eat a very hot soup, pepperish? Because some houses they put excess pepper. I want to know if we have a side effect. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for that question, ma. Um, all what I would say is beetroot is generally a very good, beetroot is good. I cannot uh, tell you why you feel heavy after you've taken it, um, but beetroot is, a, is good to have. And then in terms of pepper and hot, hot uh, it, well it depends, people have different levels of uh, threshold to pepper. Some people, I, 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 I'm not a pepperless person, but I don't like pepper. I have it in moderation, but some people must have um, and it's something that is very precious. But it helps. It helps you to clear your nose, sinuses, everything. It helps. So it depends on your own level of uh, threshold for pepper. And uh, sometimes it's hot. We have a couple of questions here that I'd like to quickly talk about. And maybe um, the question says there is a controversy over eating wheat. Some say it is harmful, some say it is not. Wheat, we believe, wheat is known to be better than. Uh, uh, it's healthier. So I don't know about that, but we can always check and come back. Um, what causes palpitation? Palpitation is when you have, um, you know, your heart is beating fast, half motion, like palpitation. And then it says that uh, chest pains and dizziness and almost fainting. Meanwhile, ECG, which is a test, will reveal nothing. That is, I have to have carry out more tests to find out what is that. I cannot just tell you from here what that is. Um, what causes low blood pressure? Some people are born with that, and this is also common with me. Some people are born with that, especially in women. Low blood pressure is very, very more. It's common. So um, it's more on the women's side, but also some people have it. So for whatever reason that you have uh, low blood pressure, they will only tell you, if you check it, try and be dabbing salt. Not as much as my friend, though, but just dabbing it to be able to know. Um, there's another one. You did not, you didn't call from extension. 
Ah, look up from extension. <laughs> we didn't call anybody from extension. That's good. Ah. <laughs> okay. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Okay, while she's doing that, they said that what is the normal blood pressure range for children? Um, as much as I know, I know that I'm not a pediatrician. Maybe Dr. Latunji can help us with that, but I will assume the same thing in terms of 120 over 80. But I will find that again. I will be able to let us know uh, sometime. Question, please. Uh, I just have a very little contribution. I know the doctor do not want to say that everybody should patronize the doctors, but there's a controlled situation. What I mean by this is that most of us, when the test fall too low, they do not bother to control. Hypertensive coma is better than hypotensive coma. It's easier to control. And insulin coma is more difficult to control than uh, diabetic coma. So my advice to everybody is that once it has fallen too low, please don't say Jesus is in control. It is better you meet the medical doctor because it is more dangerous when it is hypo and insulin coma than when it is hyper. This is very, very essential. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for the extension. Yes, I've, I, I've heard that um, we have diabetics in children and um, obese also in children. And um, our children, they take a lot of sugar. And I've also heard basically that um, they burn this sugar. The so they burn the sugar because of a lot of activities. Okay, okay, okay. So how dangerous is sugar intake for the children? Okay. Thank you for the question. It is as dangerous as it is for adults too. But you can tell that for children, children are more active than us. Yes, you can. That's why. Remember what I said, that increase in calories without no extra, without no expending, expending it is some of the things that lead to uh, diabetes because your sugar will be too much. So if you burn it, it's better. So children, they are very active. And if they take sugar, usually they will burn it out. The issue is not burning out. So whether you're a child, a child or an adult that is not doing exercise to reduce or burn this energy calorie, that's what will lead to the calories. So not too, too much sugar is not good. So whether children or adults, but then they burn it faster. I mean, because they will do exercise. That's why. Can you help me with a list of some recommended hospitals to manage these conditions <laughs> so we don't end up going to business centers instead of hospitals? Okay, basically what I tell people, um, there are a lot of quacks around, we know, doctors and hospitals likewise. If you go to the doctor for anything, please ask questions. I know some doctors will tell you, uh, do you, do you, are, you, are you telling me my job? I don't think it's wrong. Information is very key. Even if you're a condition, they tell you, uh, or they want to write a position for you, please ask question, what is it that I have? What is it? So you too, you go and inform yourself. And then I cannot tell you which hospital to go to or which hospital. But what I say is, I, I know that in government hospitals, it's easier to track whoever does something wrong. A consultant, somebody that is in government hospital that is not a consultant, he cannot lie that he's a consultant because you can track him. But in a private hospital, where a lot of things happen, and a lot of atrocities happen. By the time they finish with you there, and they're not here, yeah, refer to loot. At that loot, the person now passes it on. They say there is a loot. Meanwhile, it was because of what the person did in the private thing. I always advise, as much as possible, even though it may take more time, but government hospitals, there's no, usually no, but you can track the person. So I don't know what private hospital to go to, but make sure. If you have any specific illnesses that you think you want to discuss with me, or what hospital to go to, sometime when we see, please, that one I can help you. But generally, I can't start mentioning hospitals. Okay. Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, this is just a piece of information that I saw on the net. And one thing I know is that some of these diseases that we talk about, the Lord has already made provision. But because of financial interest, those, uh, uh, those uh, remedies are not attractive, say, for example, to pharmaceutical companies. Now, you made a statement that uh, hypertension tends to be more with uh, Africans. Yes. 
Meanwhile, there was this white man on, uh, on a video on the net, very passionate and angry. He said, research has actually been done to show that the main cause of this has to do with pigmentation, that the black man's uh, skin is naturally dark for the purpose of preventing ultraviolet light from coming. And that the research has shown that because of the setting, I think vitamin D3 or something, is, you know, you, they are not able to produce it if they are not, uh, I mean, the essence is that because the skin is dark, so they are not able to produce it. Now, the modern lifestyle has taken black men to the West, to UK and all that. Then also the kind of work we do has kept us indoor. So the skin is unable to produce this thing. And a simple solution is to give a more dose of vitamin D that does not cost anything. But if a pharmaceutical companies wants you to buy, you know, high cost hypertensive drugs. I don't know, well, I'm not a medical doctor, but I just said I should mention it because that's what I read. Thank you very much. We have read about that as well. And uh, truly, the, on this side of the world, uh, we don't have problem with our son. I'm sure you know. So if you travel and live abroad, of course, you don't cause it cold. You are living more inside. And um, that's what you just said now. Yes, is what we are hearing. But, but I mean, um, there's a lot of interest in the, in the pharmaceutical industry. Cancer, medication, hypertensive. It's a big, 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 I would say, uh, thank you. Let's put our hands together. So thank you, Brother Neyi Adikeye. Um, please, after now, after the service, after the Sunday school, it will still be available together with all the doctors. You can ask questions. But from all the things that uh, we have heard this morning, you see that we have a lot to do by ourselves, uh, especially with our eating habits. That's one, and also the issue of exercise. There are a lot of habits that God will want you to unlearn in order to help yourself. So there is no gain saying in the fact that it is God's desire for you to be in good health. In fact, the miracle today is with all this dreary life and then all the poisons we have been taken in, that God is still keeping us going. So please watch what you eat. There are a lot of things that you have said to yourself, ah, I cannot do without this. It's a lie. I'm telling you it's a lie. My wife is here. Before 2010, especially 19th of June, June 19, 2010, when I wanted to make tea by myself, in fact, she used to hide where the... Bon Vita and then a Milo and make way at that time for me. Because how will I want to make tea and I will now do it light. So I have to make it conk <laughs> at that time. I was not sick when I discovered this thing by reading a book, Why Christians Get Sick. That is when the issue of Hallelujah Diet, I started it 19 of June 2010. From that time up to now, I've not taken tea, I've not taken Coca-Cola, I've not taken any Fanta. So it is something you can do. I've not eaten any meat, including the egg you are talking about. We were talking about it one day. We went to Redemption Camp to go and, to go and sing. I was telling Chine, he was in the congregation, he was saying, Pastor, egg, 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 as if it's something that you cannot do without it. So, you can do anything that will actually enhance your health, and you will not die. You will actually continue to be looking fresh and fresh and green. Hallelujah. God has put in the nature all that we need, even for life and godliness. And there are some things that the medical uh, will not have answer for, but you will get answer in the scripture. Hallelujah. 
So, doctor, one of them that you said, you said that uh, on this side, we have a lot of uh, cases of heart-related diseases, more than the Western. The reason is just very simple. In the advanced country, they will not have to pray for light to come. <laughs> you have not uh, paid attention to, to, to this. They will not have to pray for water. They will not have to pray for good road. For instance, you cannot be driving to or uh, from here and you just uh, saying that, uh, oh, just to be going on the road. You have to be thinking again on the issue of potholes, isn't it? A lot of things that you have to be praying for or that you are thinking about, they are not thinking about them. And it is the same one mind, one mind that God gave to all of us. Hallelujah. So the Lord will continue to be there for us. God actually wants you to be in good health. All right, before we go into the communion this morning, I quickly want to read for us, or to us, Matthew chapter 8. We will read the scripture and we will pray uh, for this good health we have talked about Matthew chapter 8, I want to read from verse 1 and we will stop at verse 17. Please open your Bible. Matthew chapter 8, beginning from verse 1, we will stop at verse 17 and we will now read 1 Peter chapter 2. Just verse 24. It says, When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean or be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your ways, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gifts that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I, I say to this one, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife, his wife's mother lying sick with a fever, so he touched her, and the fever left her, and she arose and saved them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out his the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled 
which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, let's read that together. And bore our diseases. So then First Peter chapter 2, just verse 24. First Peter two verse twenty four. Are you there? It says who himself did what bore our sins in his own body on the three that we might that to sin might live for righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. We want to thank God for what God has shown us this morning. From this scripture, especially for Matthew, there are these uh, five things that we quickly see. I'm not preaching, just to mention these few things and then I will pray. The first one, we see Jesus Christ saying to that leper that I am willing that you be cleansed. So it is the desire of the Father that you will be cleansed from every form of infirmity. It is his will that you will stay fresh and green. It is his will that sickness will not have space in your body. So the fact that whether God is willing or not, that one is no longer an issue to us. We see it from what Jesus Christ said. He said, I am willing. And he's saying the same thing to you today, that he is willing. Number two is that he had mercy on the rich and on the poor. This man that came to him, the leper, you know that uh, well, from all indication, he was a poor person. And we also saw the centurion that had enough money to use the best hospital during that time. He might have actually spent enough money, but the sickness didn't go. He too ran to Jesus. And not just himself alone. If you read it from the account of Luke chapter 7, you see even the elders of the Jews coming to Jesus Christ to say to him that, uh, please, this man deserves this. Please help him. You can imagine the kind of doctors that they might have consulted before that time because this is something that everybody is coming around this man for, that he needs help at this time. So money, whether you have money or you don't have money, Jesus Christ is still the one you can run to. He had mercy on both the poor and also the rich. The next thing we see is that the same power for that one you can call small one is the same power he uses for the big one. When he entered the house and he saw the mother-in-law of Peter just for fever, that you can say that uh, if she sleeps, she will get well. Abby, Jesus Christ, he touched that one to heal her. The same power for that sickness that you can say it has no remedy that nobody can handle. Jesus Christ used his power on it to heal that person. And uh, we also see from that same scripture that he healed all of them in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Hallelujah. So, the healing that Jesus Christ will be bringing about in your life today is actually to be, to fulfill the scripture. And you know one thing that, that is so dear to God is actually fulfilling the scripture. You see Jesus Christ, every step he was taking was to fulfill the scripture. Is healing somebody this morning actually to, heal, to, to fulfill the scripture. He is forever committed to his word. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not even a dot like this in my word will pass without being fulfilled. So, Jesus Christ, he is the same yesterday, 
today and forever. What he did yesterday, he's still doing it today, and he will do it for you. We are going to stand. Even if you think you are well, <laughs> uh, you will still have to pray that the Lord will now make you to continue to remain in good health. And if some things need regulation in your life, that he needs to regulate some things, because if I want to tell you, all of us, all of us, we have been practicing wrong habits, something that actually contradicts the word of God in one way or the other. Because the, the one major problem with this world is the bastardization of everything. So, you might have caused one damage or the other in your body. So, we are going to cry to God this morning that he will touch us and regulate everything that needs his touch. We are going to rise. We will sing this song. You are the God that healeth me. You are my Lord that heals me. You sent your word and heal my disease, you are the Lord that healeth me. You are the God that healeth me. Oh, you are the Lord, my healer. Oh, you sent your word. That he let me. You are the God. Oh, that he let me. Oh, you are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And you healed my disease. Touch that area of your life as you as you sing that song again. You can touch that part of your body. Touch that part of your body this morning and talk to God about it. You are the Lord, my healer. Wherever you want Him to touch, please just place your hand there. You said your word. And you heal my disease. Oh, you are the Lord, my Lord. You sent your word, Lord. You sent your word. Don't look at anybody. Just go ahead and pray now. Pray concerning that issue, concerning that area of your body. Raise your voice unto him and pray. Raise your voice, lift your voice unto him and pray about that situation. He is here this morning to do us good. He is here this morning to heal us. Oh, you can even pray for somebody maybe that is not here. The Lord, I come, I am standing here on behalf of so 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 person. Father, as you did before, do it again. Do it again in the name of Jesus. Do it again in the name of Jesus. It is not the desire of your father that you will go and be sleeping in the hospital. He is, he is not interested in you spending money in the hospital. He can heal you. No matter what error you might have gone into in the past, the Lord wants to heal you this morning. He wants to carry out some repairs in your body. 
He wants to regulate some things in your body about your heart. Oh, he wants you to also change your habits. Oh, ask the Lord to heal you. Ask the Lord to help you. What you need to stop, ask the Lord to help you. Maybe you are given to smoking. Or maybe you are given to drinking of alcohol. Say, Lord, I receive grace, oh Lord, to change such habits. In the name of Jesus, help me to do my own part. Sir. Help me to do my own part in the name of Jesus. Please cry to God. Don't let this hour pass you by. The Lord wants you to live your own full life. He wants you to fulfill his purpose. He wants you to fulfill all that he had in mind before he brought you into this world. Oh, he is not interested in premature death for you. He is willing, he is willing that you will live and that you will be in good health. He is willing, that is why he has given us different knowledge in the, in, in the house. That is why he has given us different skill, different gift, different, different vocation in the house that can be of blessing to us. One of them is what we have heard this morning. Say, Lord, I receive good health in the name of Jesus. There is no any legal ground for any sickness to remain in your body. Because Jesus Christ carried, he, he took your infirmities. And he bore upon himself all your diseases. And by his stripes, the word of God says, you have been healed. You are healed already. Claim that word of God. That Lord Jesus, you took my infirmities. And you carried upon yourself all my diseases. By your stripes I am healed. By your stripes I am healed. Thank you everlasting Father. Thank you Lord. Lord we give you praise. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Lord, we present our bodies unto you. Your word says you are willing and you desire that we will be in good health. And we have prayed this morning, even despite the fact that many of us, we have... Uh, done something wrong in the past that are not actually helpful to our well-being. Lord, all power belongs to you. We bring ourselves before you this morning that all that needs to be regulated in our body that you will regulate them. In the name of Jesus every part of us that is not functioning properly oh god before now will receive your touch in the name of jesus lord for whatever illness that your children might have prayed for this morning as they go out of this place this morning they will no longer experience them again that sickness for which you have prayed you will no longer see it again in the name of Jesus. For the Bible tells us, you took our infirmities away and you bore upon yourself all our diseases and by your stripes, the Bible tells us, we are healed already. Lord, this is permanent in our lives. In the name of Jesus as many of us that have been struggling with one wrong habits of the other before now 
Lord will receive your grace to quit them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will separate us from some, some of those things that are harmful even to our well-being in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, the issue of uh, condition or the condition of Lagos, especially, that are not allowing us to do some certain things we ought to be doing, like exercising our body. We ask, oh God, that you will intervene on our behalf. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We pray for your son you have used for us this morning, that Lord, you will bless him. Bless him, oh God, with good health. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we will remain fresh and green all the days of our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, if you are the owner of this car, Honda, Honda Accord ES735, uh, please, you need to go and dis, uh, uh, disengage your security alarm because your battery may run down. So, Honda Accord ES735 LSR. I be LSR, yes. So please go on, do that. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, the word of God says that Jesus Christ was wounded from verse. Three, that he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as, as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has carried all our infirmities. He has carried all our afflictions. So there is no any legal ground for any sickness to actually be reigning in your body. Believe the word of God and the word of God will come to pass concerning your condition. It is what he has done. Even if you did whatever, whatever, in error or in ignorance in the past, his mercy will actually speak for you this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we sanctify these elements that, Lord, they will, they will do the miraculous things we have prayed for in our lives that body that was broken for us in order thank you for spending these few minutes listening to the word of god we pray that his grace and glory will always be with you have a lovely week and see you next time